Welcome back. This is an Alex training video on predicting the type of solid formed by a compound. So solids are the lowest energy of any of the phases. And in order to melt, you're going to have to get them apart from each other. And so there's different attractions that, that atoms or molecules will make with each other. So I would, if I were you, I would take notes on this, write this down, and then use your notes to do your homework. That's what I would do. Um, so I've written out some, some notes for you that may be helpful. Okay. So let's look at this just a second. There are several kinds of solids. You have an ionic solid, and an ionic solid is formed from ions. So if you have something positive and something negative sticking together electrically, like socks in the dryer, that's a very strong bond. It's so strong that in order to pull it apart to make it melt, you're going to have to add a lot of heat. So it's going to have the highest melting point. Okay, so you're looking for ions. Do you have anything ionic? Remember, ions are formed from something from the left side of the periodic table with something to the right side, anything that's going to be positives and negatives. That'll be your highest. Your lowest, look at the bottom, group 8A solid. Okay, so your noble gases. If you were to cool something down low enough to make neon gas into a solid. I mean, it would have to be very, very cold. Um, there is nothing attaching those two. They're, they don't want to get together. There's no bonds ever formed, uh, but they will have dispersion forces because any atoms or, or um, ions or, or any type of molecule would have temporary dispersion London forces. Okay, So those are very, very weak. So if you were to have something from the noble gases, that'll be absolutely be your weakest one, okay? Um, and it's dispersion forces. So your strongest is going to be ions, looking for ions, uh, something left and right, and you're going to have ionic bonds, and that's very strong. Your weakest will be anything noble gases. Those will only be dispersion forces, and that'll be your weakest, okay? In the middle, you've got uh, covalent Covalent, which is remember the upper part of the of the stairs. So anything, any of the non-metals together form covalent bonds where they're sharing electrons. Those are strong. They're not as strong as the ionic bonds, so they don't have the highest high end. Like water boils at a hundred, but like table salt would boil at you know way over a thousand. So it's so a ionic bond is going to be a lot more energy to break. Uh, water is all non-metals, and so you know that it boils at 100. So atomic solids, anything that are, are the non-metals acting together to make something, like water or whatever, is going to have uh, covalent bonds, and it's going to be strong, not as strong as the ions. About equal-ish to the covalent bonds are the metallic bonds. I would say the metallic bonds slightly more, maybe, most of the time. Uh, very strong, or they're strong, not very strong, not as strong as the ions. So if you were to have iron and iron, or or gold and gold, okay, gold is not going to have as high a melting point as table salt. Table salt would be higher, okay? Gold would melt earlier, but gold is going to, to melt um, a lot higher than, say, water would melt, okay? And then the Almost to the last would be mo molecules. So if you have full molecules, and remember molecules are anything covalently bonded. So you're looking for something covalently bonded. You're not looking for atoms uh, joining other atoms that are nonmetals. You're looking for you're looking for molecules that are that are made of nonmetals, and those will react together with intermolecular forces. Remember they can have Hydrogen bonds, they can have dipole-dipole uh, forces, all kinds of things like that. Okay, so you are going to be looking at this. I would copy this little list down. I think this will help, for you, help you to do your homework. Okay, so with li this list, let's fill it out. All right, so NH3, that's ammonia. All of those are non-metals. So together, that's a molecule. 
All right, so what type of solid is this? Um, what type of solid is it? Okay, this is going to be molecular. Okay, and what kind of force holds them together? Um, well, NH3, oh goodness, their molecule, so it has to be intermolecular. It's N is one of the N, O, and F, right? It's one of the it's one of the hydrogen bonding, and hydrogen bonding is the is the main inter, intermolecular force. So I would say hydrogen bonding. Okay, and um, we'll do the melting point in just a minute. What about carbon? Okay, carbon is above the stairs, so it's a non-metal. Well, it's by itself, so it's an atom. All right, so if it's by itself, it's an atom, so this would be atomic. And what do non-metals do with each other when they form a bond? Okay, they're going to have covalent bonds. What about argon? Argon's in group 8A. It's one of the noble gases. Okay, so this is also atomic because because uh, it's an atom. So it's an it's an atomic solid. But what what bonds do they make? Well, they don't make any bonds. Okay, so the only thing that they would have would be dispersion forces. Okay. So let's rank them. Which one is going to have the highest um, melting point of these guys? Do we have any ionics? Nope, no ionics. So ionics would be the top. Do we have any metals? No, there's no metals. Do we have any uh, covalent bonds? Yes, so it's going to be the highest. So this will be one is the carbon would be one, which is the highest. All right, and what is two? Well, two would be the ammonia, which has got dipole, it's uh, got hydrogen bonding, which is stronger than just London forces. Okay, so this is number two. And then the argon, which is a group eight noble gas, is gonna be three, and I guess that would be the lowest. So, you're going to have to know some things. I would write that list down and then just use that list when you're doing your homework. I think it helps.